Hi, this is Tamara Kelly from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a quick tip for when you need to make a really long starting chain. I'm going to be using Lion Brand 24-7 cotton and a Furl's Odyssey hook. This one is a G. Now for this, I'm also going to be using my yarn needle, a yarn needle, tapestry needle, whichever kind you prefer. Let me set that aside for now. And this tip is for when you have to start a project with a super long number of chains. It might be, um, you know, over 100, over 200, something where actually counting the number of chains is going to be difficult or time consuming. Uh, it's also helpful if you're not sure exactly how many chains you need, say, for a certain width. So this is going to allow you to chain, and as long as you chain enough, you can go ahead and chain too many without worrying about having an exact count. Now, Normally when we start a project, uh, unless we're starting with something like the magic circle, we're gonna start with a slip stitch, which I have here. And normally we would pull that really nice and tight on the hook. For this tip, I wanna start a little bit differently. We're still going to start with a slip stitch as before, but we're going to keep it a little bit loose. If you have to use a little bit more tail to do that, that's fine. But we wanna make the slip stitch, but we wanna keep it just a little bit loose. We're not gonna worry too much about the size of that very first chain that's on the hook right now. So I'm going to go ahead and make that first one, again, keeping that first one really loose. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and start chaining. Now, like I said, this tip works best for something where you're not sure how many chains you need, or you need a really long chain and you don't wanna sit there and count to 300 or 400 or whatever that number is for you that makes it a really long chain. So for the purposes of demonstration here, obviously I'm not going to make you watch me chain to 300, I'm just gonna chain a few so I can start working back into this chain. Now, again, the key to this is to chain more than what you need. So if you feel like you need, say, a six foot wide blanket, um, go ahead and chain seven or eight feet of chain and then start working your stitch pattern back in there. As long as you have extras, you'll be all set. So. Now it doesn't matter what stitch I start working back into the chain. The point is whatever your stitch pattern is, you're going to start working it and then eventually you will have too many stitches. So what do you do about those too many chains that you have hanging left over here at the end? Let's say I've made my 300 chains, I've worked my 280 stitches and now I've got all these chains here left over at the end. What am I gonna do with these? I chained too many. This is also great, of course, if you've changed too many on accident. What you wanna do is go back to that slip knot, and there's a reason we kept that one loose. I'm gonna set my hook aside, pick up my yarn needle here, and I'm actually going to use it to help me pick that knot back open. I like undoing any knot, sometimes you have to turn it over and find just where the loop of the knot you need to pull on is. There we go, I think I found it. I'm sure we've all been there before. Trying to undo a knot. Let's see here, is that the end? Yes, there's the end. Pull it right out there, like so. Now, from here, I just literally undo the chain. I work all the ends back through. Somehow I've managed to put a knot in it here. So I'll pull out my needle again. Use that to help me pick it apart, oops made it a little tighter, but that's okay. I've got my needle in there to help me keep it open. There we go. Helps to have a little bit of nails, but again, the yarn tapestry needle will do a good job here too. And basically you wanna just keep pulling the end through. You can use your needle to make it a little bit quicker. You can see as you go, it gets a little bit easier because you've just got that loop and pull right through. And then when you get to the end here, now I'm back where my stitches are. And there's my first stitch. So what I can do is depending on how much of a finished edge I want here, I can just pull this loop tight and call it good. Otherwise I can thread it on my yarn needle here. And if this was a really long one, I'd cut it a little bit shorter just to make it easier to work with. You just wanna have enough of a tail to weave in, of course. You always wanna be able to weave in your ends. So from there, I can just sort of go through that loop again, keep it secure, pull it a little bit tight, like so. And then when I go to weave that in, it won't look any different than if I had started with a standard, there we are, a standard slip knot. And it'll be hidden quite well. 
So you can see that's a good tip. Again, if you've chained too many on accident or on purpose, you can always just take that slip knot out and undo your slip knot, undo your chains until you have just exactly how many you needed for your project. As long as you make that first slip knot a little bit looser than you might normally do, it's a great tip for working with any stitch pattern. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, let us know what you think in the comments, and thank you so much for watching.